do a job, or you've been assigned to one, which exposes you to air that may not be safe to breathe. Your employer is required by law to remove the hazard so that you can safely work without a respirator, if that's possible to do. As an interim measure to protect your health and perhaps your life, you are required to wear some type of respirator. There's now a federal law, the Occupational Safety and Health Act, or OSHA, that's designed to make sure everyone works in the safest possible environment. Under the act, a number of people have responsibilities for your safety. You are one of them. You are responsible for testing your own respirator each time you use it. We'll cover the procedures for doing this in a few moments. You're also responsible for reporting any unsafe condition that might make your work environment more hazardous. Obviously, nobody can fix a problem until they know about it. A supervisor has obligations under the Act too. It's his job to let you know the proper kind of respirator to use for each task. To see that you get training and written instructions in respirator use and to ensure that everything meets the safety requirements. Incidentally, he is required by the act to make certain you wear a respirator when it's called for and to take disciplinary action if you refuse. The act calls on medical and safety personnel to make surveys of your work environment, determine the precautions necessary to protect you and investigate any complaints violations or injuries. The medical department also does physical exams that are designed to make sure the work is not damaging your health. There are others as well who have responsibilities under the OSHA law. The engineers, for example, and the commanding officer, who of course has the overall responsibility for the entire program. One of the things that's required under the law for your protection is the training you are now receiving. Among the topics to be covered is what your employer has done or is planning to do to make your work environment safer. And the training program is required to advise you what steps are being taken toward that goal. Another part of the training deals with the use care and maintenance of a respirator. There are two main types that we'll deal with here. This is the type called a mechanical filter respirator. It's mainly used to protect against dust, mist, metal fumes, and the like. The principal parts of this respirator are the filtering device, which removes the dangerous particles from the air. The inhalation valve that the air passes through to enter the mask as you breathe in. The exhalation valve that lets your breath escape when you breathe out. And the face mask itself that fits tightly to your face so the contaminated air can't enter. The other main type we'll deal with is the chemical cartridge respirator. It comes in a half face piece version and a full face piece version. This type is designed to give protection mostly against gases and vapors. The parts are similar. Cartridge or canister. Inhalation valve. Exhalation valve and face piece. One other common type is the disposable respirator. It's worn when there's a light contamination, but not enough to require the greater protection of a mechanical or chemical cartridge type. 
There are, in addition, quite a few other specialized types of respirators that don't concern us here. Each type of respirator is designed to do only certain types of jobs. Make sure you're using the right kind, or you may be getting no protection at all. During your training, you will be taught how to fit and test your device so you're sure it's giving good protection. A man with long sideburns or a beard can't usually wear a respirator because he can't get a tight fit. People who wear contact lenses also have a problem because of the possibility of dangerous chemicals being trapped under the lens. Ordinary eyeglasses won't get in the way if all you require is a half face mask device. But the temple pieces interfere with the seal of a full face piece unit. There is a way around that problem, however, and that is to use special eyeglass inserts. The respirator must fit with a good, tight seal to your face all the way around. But a word of caution, do not try to get a good seal by tightening the straps so much that they are uncomfortable. You should be able to get a good fit, yet with the straps comfortable enough that you'll be able to wear the device for long periods on the job. If you can't get it both tightly sealed and comfortable at the same time, it's possible that a different size or a different type is needed. Each time you wear your respirator on the job, you first do a pair of tests to make sure it's working properly. You begin with the positive pressure test. With some types of respirators, you may have to start by removing the cover of the exhalation valve. Cover the valve with your hand or a piece of paper and breathe gently into the face piece. You should be able to feel a slight buildup of pressure without any sign of leakage before the pressure gets strong enough to break the seal. If you get a pressure buildup, it means that the face piece is forming a good seal against your face. The negative pressure test involves closing off the inlet valve or both inlet valves if there are two. Block off the air intake with your hand or hands, then gently suck in your breath so the face piece collapses slightly. Hold it for several seconds. The face piece should remain collapsed, indicating that the device is probably seated to your face well enough to prevent outside air from entering around the edges. That completes the test. In your trading, after you've gotten a good fit and checked the seal with the positive and negative pressure tests, you'll be given a chance to wear the respirator in the normal air of the classroom, a chance to start getting used to it. There's nothing difficult about it. It's mostly a matter of becoming adjusted to the idea of having it on. You'll find that conversation is possible, although a bit difficult. After this familiarization period, the next step is a test of how well your device fits. The test is done with a chemical known as banana oil. It's got such a powerful odor that one drop would make the whole room smell like bananas. But if your face piece forms a good tight seal against your face, you should not be able to smell it. After the instructor has checked you with a small quantity of the chemical, and you've assured him that you can't detect the odor, you're ready for the confidence chamber. The chamber is filled with a strong concentration of banana oil. Again, if your mask fits properly, you should not get the banana smell. Each student will be checked in turn and then go into the chamber. It's very important that you be honest about whether you detect the smell. If you do, it means the respirator is not protecting you, which could be dangerous to your life or health on the job. Remove your respirator and adjust it again to see if you can get a satisfactory seal. 
When you come out and take off your respirator, you'll smell the banana odor. Don't worry, it wears off in a bit. On completion of your training, you'll be fully prepared to use the respirator for safety on the job. Now, let's take a look at the steps for everyday use. Always inspect your respirator before you put it on. Look to see that everything's in good condition. Face piece, headbands, and valves. Check the cartridges to be sure they're the kind you need. Many people don't want to bother doing safety checks like these. But that's foolish. They only take moments. And it's your own safety that's at stake. Each time you put on your respirator, remember to make sure you've got a good seal by doing the positive and negative pressure checks. Block the exhalation valve. Breathe out and see that there's a slight pressure buildup. Block the inhalation opening or openings. Inhale gently and make sure the face piece remains collapsed for several seconds. So far, we've been talking about what your respirator does for you. Now, let's talk about what it will not do. For example, down in that manhole or in any closed tank or confined space, there may not be very much air. Your filter or chemical cartridge respirator can clean up air that's dirty, but cannot provide you oxygen if it isn't already there. Check the atmosphere, or have it checked, before you enter. Your respirator is designed to work for you in normal levels of pollution. But if there's a gas leak, or a spill, or some other like problem, get out and call for the firemen who have specialized equipment to handle it. End of the shift, quitting time. Your respirator has protected you as you worked. Now, it needs some care and attention, so it will be ready for tomorrow. You turn it in regularly at the end of the shift or at other designated times and receive a fresh one. Store the respirator in your locker, still in its plastic bag, so it won't be damaged by dust, heat, cold, chemicals, and so on. Put it down so that the face piece and exhalation valve rest in a normal position. Take good care of it, so it can take good care of you. Meanwhile, the respirator you've just been using will be cleaned and checked. This work is usually done by people specially assigned to the job. But you should know the procedures, since you may have to do it yourself. The filter, cartridge, or canister is first removed. The straps are also removed to facilitate cleaning. Then the face piece is washed and disinfected. If necessary, a hand brush can be used to loosen the dirt. When thoroughly clean, it's rinsed in fresh warm water. Then it's left to air dry. Once dry, it's inspected and new filters, cartridges or canisters are installed. This has to be done carefully to ensure that the seal is tight. Now, ready for another use, the respirator is put into a plastic bag for protection until needed. We all have a part to play in keeping ourselves safe and healthy on the job. Among the important things you can do 
is to learn and follow the correct procedures of using the respirator. And then, be sure always to wear it when you're supposed to. Remember, it only protects you when you have it on.